So we're going to start now with um, the one topic, extracurricular activities and specialized programs. So our first presenter is Julie from Stepping Stones. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Julie Vanderkant from Stepping Stones. Um, I'm a transition planner at Stepping Stones. Anna C. Osen is the other transition planner at Stepping Stones. Stepping Stones is a foundations initiative through the Ministry of Community and Children's Social Services and part of St. Francis Advocate. Um, I'm going to attempt to share my screen. Um, this is um, a picture of our pamphlet. Um, so Stepping Stones is a plan planning service primarily for people with a developmental disability who are living in Sarnia Lambton. Our service is dedicated to assisting young adults plan for their future after school. We do this by getting to know each participant and helping them develop a person-directed plan. We focus on participants' strengths and capacities and interests centering on participants' dreams, hopes, and goals. Our service is a five-year opportunity to explore your community and try new things, explore interests, and build skills, and build independence, and relationships, and friendships. At Stepping Stones, there's an opportunity for specific planning facilitation tools, such as Paths or maps or a liberty plan. Participants and families must be willing to be active in the planning process and willing to build a network of support. Once goals are established, um, there's an opportunity to allocate funds towards the plan as the support needed has been identified. Um, all of our referrals come through Developmental Services Ontario, as you heard from Beth George Watson. And funding is not guaranteed, but is based on the goals set by each participant. Thank you, Julie. So Thank you. our next presenter will be hearing from Norma, from Community Living Sarnia. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen. Um, you'll have to put up with me a couple times throughout the day, <laughs> tonight. So I'm talking about um, community living and some of the uh, options that we have with regards to um, extracurricular activities and things that we uh, community participation supports. So being involved in community life creates opportunities for new experiences and interests that potentially develop friendships and the ability to contribute to the community an interdependent life um, with and with with and without a disability are connected enriches all lives due to the um, Due to COVID right now, a lot of our programs are on hold. However, we're hoping starting the new year, you can see the uh, people here dancing. We're hoping to do a virtual dance uh, once a month to try to get uh, people involved and connected through Zoom. Um, so we're gonna start with our dance parties as one of the things that we're going to uh, launch in the new year. Um, community sponsored activities, um, if you want to have greater choice and create greater independence by developing new skills and being included in community activities, we can help with that. And again, we want to know what your likes are um, and then you are able to um, choose the likes and we focus on trying to have that as part of our activities so that people can enjoy what they're coming out to do. Um, Sponsored activities that we, recreational activities and special events throughout the year. Uh, the focus is on fun, fitness, socialization and involvement in your community. 
Um, you can participate in community living sponsored events, teams or clubs, as well as in community recreation, leisure and social activities. Opportunities are made possible through the supports of our awesome volunteers and local community groups. So community living, we do host the dances. We host two bowling leagues. Um, we are the host for the Friendship Club. We partner with Pathways for our Wednesday night social swim. And again, these are things that will hopefully resume um, after COVID. And, but in the meantime, we're trying to be creative and plan some things that, uh, whether it be we bowling, that we are going to try to do virtually. We're in the planning stages to hopefully bring more um, entertainment to individuals that are staying home due to COVID. We work closely um, with Pathways, as I said, for the social swim. We have also with the Iron Eagles, um have always had a good rapport with them and send people their way for their uh weightlifting program on tuesday nights so um we're very open to try new things and again the main focus is that we will work with partners to get ac activities in the community that are beneficial to everyone and the main thing being enjoyable um, if you need any more information, we do send out, um, pre-COVID, we will send out a community calendar that lists all the events, how to get connected. So it's a simple phone call or an email um, and you're on the list. So if you do have fur further questions, uh, please feel free to contact me at the uh, information on the screen, as well as um, you can contact our receptionist. Sandra and she will help get you in the direction you need to go. So thank you. Thank you so much, Norma. Our next presenter, we're going to hear from Lori from Lambton County Developmental Services. Hi, everybody. My name is Lori Richardson and I'm with Lambton County Developmental Services. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about the extracurricular activities that we have to offer. Um, so to give you a little history, pre-COVID, we had our day support options um, that existed in Petrolia, Forest, and Corona called Community Skills Development and Forest Community Connections. So uh, as you've heard uh, from other people tonight, obviously those programs are closed due to COVID uh, pandemic. However, we have been trying to make the best of it by offering um, different types of services. So we have lots of virtual activities going on right now um, for, for the current people that we support and for people that live at home with their families that are part of our services. So some things that we have been providing um, are some cooking classes, exercise classes, um, trivia, games, days, skill building um, to help people still work on their money skills or literacy. Um, we've also been providing some entertainment with, we've been having Tony Bycraft come in and do some karaoke for us, uh, as, long as, some, as well as some local mu musicians who will sing um, some songs for us. So that's some things that we've been doing uh, to kind of make the best of COVID currently. We also, for those people who live at home with their families who were a part of those day programs, we are actually offering um, some services to them right now where we can go out, we'll pick them up and we'll take them out for a, um, a low risk activity. So they might be with us for half a day or so, and we can go um, for a drive to the bridge in Sarnia, or we'll try to do some crafts together, go for some walks, go to the park. Um, it's a little bit tricky finding some low risk activities right now, but we are certainly trying to get creative with our time to make the best, um, best days for people possible right now. With our programs being closed, we are definitely looking into what this looks like for the future for us. Um, we want to continue to get people involved in the community and having those meaningful days. So that is definitely a goal of ours and um, we will keep working on that as long as, uh, as long as we can. So that's what LCDS has to offer for extracurricular activities right now. And I'll be back to talk to you guys a little bit later about some other services. Thank you everyone. Thank you so much, Lori. Next, we'll be hearing from Melanie from Pathways Health Center for Children. 
Good evening. So a little bit about the lifelong learning program. Um, and for some reason, it's not sharing my screen. So um, just want to- It is showing up here. Okay. A little bit about our program. So we offer um, what we call our lifelong learning program, which is held in our Lampton room here at Pathways. It runs two days a week, typically from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We have um, a variety of services offered through that program, one of them being community involvement through volunteerism. So um, our participants volunteer at the Inn of the Good Shepherd, at Twin Lakes, in the Cache Daycare, where they assist with circle and gym time. Our participants also um, volunteer at Grace United Church, helping prepare lunches for local schools and, and provide some light cleaning supports there. The other area that supports are provided is around skill building. So opportunities to build some skills around life skills, social interaction, building and constructing of different materials, learning some money management skills, as well as some educational opportunities. Another big component of the lifelong learning program is an opportunity for our participants to stay active to maintain that healthy lifestyle. So they participate in activities such as aquafit, water time in the therapeutic pool on a daily basis when our pool is open and hopefully very, very soon it'll be open again. <laughs> Yoga, Zumba, many physical games that they participate in, bowling, walking, hiking, exercises and stretching on a regular basis. The other thing that we pride ourselves on in the lifelong learning program is being seen as assets to rely on in our community. So we have built partnerships with um, one of the, the French schools in our community, with Grace United Church, they call on us as well, the St. Clair Catholic School Board, the Lambton Kent District School Board, as well as Lambton College. So we go in and we not only um, provide opportunities for folks in those areas, but we have folks in those areas come and participate and um, share their resources with us as well. One of the other big components of the lifelong learning program is a social enterprise component. So it's providing the participants with skills and opportunities to plan, organize, manage their money. So some of the things that they do in those areas are they organize a treat trolley where they would um, have the, their baked goods available for purchase. They also have holiday sales on a regular basis. So they would, they would make crafts as well as um, baked goods for holidays such as Valentine's Day, Easter, Christmas, those type of holidays. The other component that has been added to the Lifelong Learning Program just in the last year is that the Lifelong Learning Program and some of the participants in that program are now running our cinema pathways a few times a year. So opening up our Lampton Room to community members to come in and watch a movie. So some of the things that we've learned um, along the way. So we are anticipating increased enrollment as the Lifelong Learning Program grows and becomes known in the community, as well as new passport funding continues to be approved for people. We have restructured our family and transition support services to offer more services to young adults which includes one-to-one -one supports or respite type supports and the promotion of the lifelong learning program. So things that are happening behind the scenes. So we are currently exploring expanding our eligibility criteria for families who have the funds to support their son or daughter with one-on-one -on -one support staff. We send out a monthly newsletter and we've expanded our presence on social media by starting our own Facebook page. Some of the other things I've already talked about. So we've integrated Cinema Pathways. The Lifelong Learning Program is becoming an information tool for families. And we are happy to announce that we are actively exploring offering a third day, especially for those young adults with more complex or mobility needs. So what can you do um, to get more involved? Contact our center and you can and chat with me or our coordinator of that program to come and tour the space, meet with participants and staff. I just leave you with a few pictures of um, some of our participants, participants um, participating in some of the activities in the Lifelong Learning Program. Because of COVID, our Lifelong Learning Program hasn't been able to operate in the center on a regular basis, but they are still um, meeting via Zoom a couple of times a month. 
and um, the programmers in that program are taking care packages out to folks so that they can still participate in interactive craft making and skill building via remote Zoom. So those are options that are still available right now. Thank you so much, Melanie. We're just running out of time, but thank you so much. That was fantastic. Now, our next presenter is Tana from Special Olympics. Hello. <laughs> All right, so hello, my name is uh, Tana Manchester. I am the community coordinator for Special Olympics Sarnia. So um, what Special Olympics Sarnia is? So we are a nonprofit volunteer-based organization that is committed to providing athletic opportunities to individuals with intellectual disabilities in the Sarnia Lambton area. So we have recreational and competitive sports teams. The age requirement for that is um, age eight and up, um, no upper age limit. If you're 80 and you wanna come out and shoot some hoops, you're more than welcome. We also have a new learn to train program for younger children, ages two to seven. And we have started school championship programs in high schools as well. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about our community programs. This is obviously before COVID hit. So in our regular year, regular times, we would offer a fall winter program that runs from October to April. Um, we have floor hockey, basketball in Sarnia and Petrolia, bowling, powerlifting and swim. Um, we also offer fitness programs all throughout the year, um, yoga, Zumba and strength training and our active start program and our school programs in um, the high schools. Um, during the spring summer, which runs from mid-May to the end of July, we do track and field, soccer, and bocce. So I'll talk a little bit more about our recreational and competitive sports teams. It's basically one and the same, but if you want to come out and, um, you know, just participate recreationally, we do weekly one-hour practices, um, which consist of skills and drills and scrimmages. Um, and then if you do want to compete, um, which we definitely encourage, but it's not for everybody, we do at least one away tournament somewhere in southwestern Ontario. We rent a bus. It's a lot of fun. We go down, coaches, volunteers, um, athletes. And we've also started hosting tournaments here in Sarnia, which is awesome because then family and friends can come out and cheer us on. And for those athletes that don't want to travel, this is a, an excellent option for them. Um, at all of our practices and any tournaments we go to, there is always equal playing time and individuals compete with others at the same ability level. So when we go to basketball tournaments, we have two different teams and we don't want any blowouts. We want people to um, participate in a meaningful way and have fun. So um, never any worry about that. Um, we keep costs relatively um, low for everybody to ensure that there's no barriers to participation. So the cost per sport for the whole season is $40. Um, that one exception is bowling. It's $240 for the season. Um, and uh, just a side note, um, the last qualifying period, which um, we went through with tournaments, we did have six athletes um, qualify to go to spring provincial games. Um, we weren't able to go because of COVID, but that was very, very exciting. So that was the first, a first for us in Sarnia here. Um, the fitness classes that we offer all year round, um, actually, sorry, October, October through March, yoga, Zumba, and strength training. Um, all of these classes have certified coaches. The ses sessions are approximately 12 weeks, and they cost anywhere from $20 to $25 for that 12-week session. So a lot of fun. Like the, if you see the picture in the middle there, Zumba class, we, I think we had 40 athletes the last time, and oh my gosh, it was so much fun. Um, school championship programs. So these are programs that we've brought into the high schools in Sarnia Lambton. Um, one school hosts the competition and any ind individual in an alternative learning class um, is able to participate. So these are one day events, it's all day. We can do them, um, we can do basketball, bocce, soccer and track and field. So before COVID hit, we managed to get two basketball tournaments in, a lot of fun. Um, the students are, you know, playing for their playing for their school and, uh, you know, just like, just like any other kid in high school. So they are a lot of fun. And yes, we are a sports organization, but a huge part of what we do is social as well. Um, 
all of our sports, all of our practices, there's always a social component. It's awesome. Um, we also do bigger events. We do an annual banquet in April, free for athletes. Um, we have dinner, a DJ, uh, everybody comes up and gets a medal. It's a lot of fun. We have an annual Christmas party. Um, we've started doing Duke cruises in August. Um, we rent the whole Duke and it's for all of our athletes and families and volunteers if they want to come. Um, I host two summer fun days at the YMCA Leadership Challenge Center. Um, for athletes to come out. It's nice to, you know, not be at practice and just be around your friends and they can encourage one another and challenge themselves to do um, some pretty awesome things at the Challenge Center. Um, we also hold various fundraisers throughout the year that we highly encourage our athletes um, to be involved in and they do. Um, Staples holds an annual barbecue. Um, our athletes come out and sell to the public. Um, and we do a chuck a puck, um, which is a lot of fun for our athletes as well. And we're always open to new ideas for that. So, so that's I, in a yeah. typical year. Oh, sorry. No, no, that's <laughs> virtually. <okay>. <laughs> it just shows how much uh, Special Olympics <laughs> has to offer. So thank you so much. We are running out of time. But again, for everyone, um, once we're done with the presenters for extracurricular activities, if you have questions for Tana, just put please uh, put them in the chat box and we'll get them answered at the end. So thank you so much. Our next presenter is Paul from YMCA Sarnia. I know there was some technical difficulties, so let's see there. Hi, Paul. You're all set to go. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Paul Scusa, and I'm the general manager at the Jerry McCaw Family Center YMCA in Sarnia. And just wanted to talk to you a little bit tonight about some of the awesome programs we have here at the Y. Uh, even through the COVID world, um, we had to shut down a little bit back in the spring, uh, as a lot of our community did, but we opened back up uh, at the end of August. And since then, we've been doing some indoor fitness programs like wellness floor access, uh, lane swimming and aqua classes in the pool, and group fitness classes uh, in our spin room and in the gym. And we also have pickleball running every afternoon as well. So we're doing a lot of adult programs. We just started doing some uh, family programs, parent and tot swim, and um, rec swim on weekends. So we're getting, slowly getting back to uh, the world we used to know. We're still not quite there uh, with some of our kids' programs. We're hoping to get more things back in the new year, um, swimming lessons and some other kids' rec activities. Uh, I'd like to share my screen with you real quick so you can see, um, yeah, some of the stuff I'm talking about here. And there we go. Sorry, give me one second. So, the uh, website, ymcaswo.ca, has uh, a lot of great information on anything you're looking for uh, from the Y, especially when it comes to our health and fitness center in Sarnia. It's going to give you the program schedule uh, for, our exercise, for our group uh, fitness classes and our uh, aquatics programs like Lane Swim and Parent and Tot and Rec Swim and Aquafit uh, and uh, Rec Sports like Pickleball. Eventually, we'll get back to doing things like dropping basketball um, and volleyball and badminton, hopefully all within time. Um, but if you look at the screen here, you can see everything, uh, hopefully, that I'm seeing, um, where it's going to give you a bit of a virtual tour of the place. Uh, but I encourage you to come in and check out the place uh, in person. We're happy to walk you through and talk about the programs we're offering now and the programs that we'll hopefully get back to offering uh, in time. But the website's a great resource if you want to check it out. More information on things like Y Thrive, um, fitness programs and free coaching that we offer here to get people started, our personal training programs. We have a great team of personal trainers. Uh, our group fitness classes, we do everything from boot camp to yoga to cycle classes to aqua fit to stretching classes uh, to muscle conditioning classes. So lots of options. We have right now a couple dozen classes every week in the mornings and the afternoons and the evenings. Um, so yeah, be, be sure to, to check that out, the program schedule. Um, as I mentioned, pickleball is open um, for uh, a lot of folks that want to come in the afternoons to place an indoor pickleball as the weather is colder. Uh, and the pool's open every morning, afternoon, and a few evenings a week and on weekends. Uh, so you can book by uh, uh, going online or you can call us at the branch and you can book a spot if you are a member. Um, you don't have to book to come and use the wellness floor right now at this time. You can just show up during our hours of operation and work out upstairs. Uh, last year we did a big renovation on the wellness floor and did a whole new turf area, all new fitness equipment, um, cardio equipment, strength equipment. It's really, really sharp. So really encourage you to come and check it out. Uh, for yourself because nothing I'm going to say is going to do it justice, but the website does have some pictures and uh, an updated uh, virtual tour that you can check out and it's going to show you all the programs we offer, right? But if you go down all the way, you can see everything we do from our membership rates 
Um, the Y is a charity, so we have a great financial assistance program for members that feel they're not able to pay the full fee membership. We want to help them out, make sure nobody gets turned away, so we can go over everything with you and talk about how we can maybe, maybe get you a, a discounted rate, all right, if you qualify for up to maybe 50% off membership uh, fee, all right? So very simple to, to come in and talk to us and just check out more of what we offer at the Y. Right now, a lot of great stuff for adults, getting back to the kids and families within time. Um, but we will get there, uh, as we keep saying. It's, it's not an if, it's just a when. Um, so in 2021, we're, we're already planning on, on doing more than we are now. All right, so yeah, hopefully uh, that gave you a lot of good info on the why, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you soon. We'll be here, we're open Monday to Friday, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., and we're open on weekends, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. So we hope you can drop in and see us, and if you have more questions or want more information, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you then. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you, Jennifer. Next, we will be hearing from Shelley from Parks and Recreation Lambton. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Shelley Kern from the Strangway Community Center, and uh, I have a short PowerPoint presentation to share with you. Um, let me just bring it up. Okay, so our center is located on uh, 260 E Street North, so it's basically Central Sarnia. Sorry, Shelley, I don't see your PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Just a second, I'll go back. Hmm. Okay, I'll proceed anyways. Um, so some of the recreation programs that our uh, center does offer for adults are um, basically in a lot of different areas, fitness, um, workshops, how to, we have a hobby shop, a woodworking shop, um, And um, we um, uh, normally, pre-COVID, we would have up to 275 people coming through our doors Monday to Friday, and then we we're open on weekends as well. Um, of course, that's changed quite a bit. We are reopened um, here at the center, and we just reopened November the 9th. Um, we're, offering programs, of course, the, um, with the safety protocols. And um, just trying to figure out why I can't see my presentation. Anyways, so um, the um, center is basically supported by um, volunteers, we have staff as well, limited staff, um, but we do depend a lot on volunteers uh, to help us uh, maintain the programs. For example, the hobby shop, we have supervisors in there that supervise uh, anyone that comes in to use the woodworking uh, machinery. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have volunteers that work alongside um, in the kitchen because we do have a cafe that's open for lunch. Um, we use volunteers as well at our front desk to greet people, to give tours of the center. We also um, have uh, volunteers that um, act as conveners. So they would work um, with the groups that say, for example, are playing tennis or pickleball, um, badminton, those types of programs. So they would be on site um, to greet people and just to make sure that everybody's enjoying themselves and, and following by the rules type of thing. Um, our uh, center is um, basically open right now Monday to Friday from 8.30 to 4.30 and um, we have an entirely accessible center so meaning our right through from the parking lot to the front doors right in our washrooms and our programs are all accessible so uh, some of our instructors um, have the need to have, have the whole building um, accessible, for example, some are in a wheelchair, some come by um, with the caravan, with Leo, so they um, access the transportation as well. And then our participants, of course, have lots of different needs as well. Um, so a lot of our programs um, are social in nature, are physical, are basically learning new skills or um, participating in workshops. We have musical instrument programs such as ukulele, uh, guitar, um, and uh, some of the fitness programs would be uh, yoga, which is very popular. Um, 
We also have Build Your Bones, uh, Active Aging. Um, so a lot of different types of programs that work on um, keeping you healthy. And um, we uh, have very qualified instructors. They are, um, you know, very keen on, on working with people and meeting their different needs, um, ensuring that they're getting a lot out of the programs. We, um, uh, as well, um, have volunteer instructors, for example, that do teach, uh, for example, the ukulele lesson, so how to play a ukulele, and we have a ukulele band. Um, Pre-COVID, we also had a choir, and we had a, a choir leader for that. Um, unfortunately, right now, we can't do much singing, so we're, we're hanging on to when we can return to, back to singing. We have line dancing. Um, we have dancer size. Um, but a lot of the programs just basically focus on being social, uh, being fit, um, learning new skills, meeting new people. Um, we, pre-COVID as well, we had day trips. So we would have a coach bus come and pick up a group of people and we would visit different sites throughout Ontario. So it was a great way for people if they didn't drive or, or just weren't just weren't ready to, to drive the roads type of thing through Ontario. They could have the comfort of the coach bus and we'd have a hostess on board and we, we had some, some great spots in Ontario. And unfortunately that's on hold until after, um, um, resume back to um, after COVID. Oh, and, um, oh, I'm so sorry, Shelley. Uh, we're just at the five minute mark. Okay. Um, but thank you. Thank you so much. 